come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. Jesus warns us today in his teachings, beware. Those with wealth, power, privilege, access, authority, love to make a show of that wealth and power and privilege and access and authority. They have a need to be seen to be seen making a showing of their great piety, to be seen making an offering of their wealth, to be seen following the expectations that they have set for others. Except they aren't really following them. They give out of wealth and abundance. What they give is simply a show. It has no depth. It carries no greater meaning to them. It's self-serving because it's purely about putting on that show. A show for those they they need to impress in order to gain even more, more access, more power, more wealth. And it's a show for those who they need to control in order to maintain that power and wealth. They make a show of it so that no one can question whether or not they are giving. And since no one can question, they can give as little as possible while making that show so that their immense wealth can grow. Jesus warns, They devour widows' houses, and only for the sake of appearance say long prayers. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. They have received their reward already, a a life of wealth and power here and now, but at what cost? Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. She has come and put all of her faith and hope in the Lord. She has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. She is truly making a sacrifice before the Lord out of her faith. Jesus holds up her example because it is the level of faith that we must have to give literally everything we have in our faith to God. And there's a further question being put forward by Christ in holding her up as the example from which this praise is being offered. Why must she make such a sacrifice? Why must she be the one who puts her last two copper coins, a penny's worth, into the treasury and offering to God? Because the wealthy and the powerful, those who are parading around in long robes and making a great show of their giving, making a great deal out of the long prayers that they are offering, have failed her. The faith has become so corrupted by wealth and power and privilege that it has lost sight of what the call is to sustain the widow and orphan. It is a base tenet of the Jewish community of faith that the widow and orphan are to be cared for to be loved, to be sustained, so they do not fall into abject poverty, so they do not have to come to the treasury with nothing and give it anyways. This is the critique that Jesus is offering today. Jesus' acknowledgement of this poor widow is as much about her depth of faith as it is about the failure of the community to see her and care for her with love and compassion. Instead of providing for her, sustaining her, The scribes waste their wealth on their pageantry. They are so focused on being seen, so focused on the performative expression of their faith that they have lost their way. They have lost the plot, and they have lost their faith. And the widow knows that the system has failed her time and time again because she is a woman. She is a widow. She is poor. She has no access no privilege, no authority. 
But rather than fawning over the wealthy, powerful male elite, she turns away from the rulers of this world and towards the only one who can provide and sustain. She offers everything she has out of her faith, sacrificing from herself an acknowledgement that all that we have comes from God. The Lord who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. This is the God of our faith. This is the ruler we must turn our focus to time and time again. For the kingdom of God is not what we experience here in this creation today, and there is no reason why it can't be what we experience. If we simply turn to faith, turn to love, and know that God is continually calling us to care for our neighbor, to show compassion, to fight for their needs, to ensure that all of God's creation, wonderfully made in all of their amazing and beautiful diversity, are not just loved, but are able to know and experience justice, to be fed and have their hunger met, to be set free from the bondages of their imprisonment, to be healed and to have their eyes opened to their own blindness towards others towards love, to be lifted up, to be loved, cared for, to be sustained. When we live into that call of our faith, when we cling to love without fear, when we make love our priority, we will frustrate the way of the wicked. We know this to be true because our faith is grounded not in flashy showings, of drawing attention, of putting on a display for all to see, but rather in the quiet confidence that we are following the resurrected Christ in the way of love. That we are giving all that we have in service to our neighbor. That we are giving beyond what is expected. That we do so not drawing attention to ourselves for praise and acknowledgement, but because it is the right thing to do in our faith. For if we are willing to only ever give out of our abundance and wealth, we will never truly follow Christ. If we accept the world the way it is, we will remain comfortable and content. But the call of following Christ in the way of love, though, is to give everything we have and then give some more so that we can bring Christ's love into this world so we can change this world that has grown complacent and loving and serving our neighbor. We can change this world that has become so concerned with what is directly in front of our faces, the pomp and circumstance and signaling without any deeper conviction and commitment to move past that public acknowledgement and get our hands truly dirty as we labor with Christ in the work that we are called to on this day. We instead engage in the work of following Christ because of the promise that has been fulfilled in Christ's death and sacrifice for us. The writer of Hebrews, whose true authorship is lost to us, makes a point of emphasizing this for us today. Christ's death and resurrection and ascension was not into a human-built temple, but into the true kingdom of God. Nor was Christ's death, Christ's sacrifice for our sins, a show of pageantry. It was a true sacrifice of everything he had. Christ gave his very life in service of God, in service of bringing love into the world, in service of forgiving our sins so that love can spread in this creation. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. 
This is what we are working towards. To bring the kingdom of God to this creation. To welcome the second coming of Christ with a road of love that has been paved across this creation. This is the work that we do here at St. Stephen's. This is the work we are called to do as we move beyond the walls of this place and work to better our community. This is hard work. Sometimes this is work we don't want to do. Sometimes this is work that we are already exhausted from doing. But it is necessary work as we strive to live more fully into our call to follow Christ on the way of love. It is clear that there is a lot of work still to do in this creation to center love in our conversations, in our relationships with one another, and to call on our own leaders to center love and provide for the vulnerable, the marginalized, and the outcasts. Some of that work is internal. It's a recognition that we have not fully done the work to strip away our own biases, to shine light on our own growing edges, to admit where we need to grow in our own selves as much as in our faith. I recognize that there's more I can do to move from learning to action, to prioritize my time and energy towards action when I want to use my own privilege to make excuses to sit back and let others engage, to prioritize my own work in changing hearts, even if, perhaps especially if, it's just one or two at a time. And some of that work we're called to do is external. It is advocating for the voiceless. It's solidarity with those who are crying out in pain. It is doing the work of Christ always, without fear, without judgment, without expectation of recognition or acknowledgement. For when we do this work in faith, we know that God is with us. We know that God strengthens us. We know that God enables us to be successful, for that is what we do as followers of Christ. We change this world through our actions. We change this world through our care and compassion. We change this world through our love that knows no boundaries, no limits, no exceptions. Now let us go forth in the name of Christ and get to work. Amen. Amen.